of the Boilermakers. Well, one interesting point about these two head coaches, Patrick, is that they played against each other yes. in 10-year-old AAU. And Coach Duffy said that Katie Geralds was tough to guard. She had a smooth stroke and was very long. And it's awesome to see these two back at the helm of two really good programs. McLaughlin will be basketball. opening possession. Yeah, we'll talk more about that as we go. And an early foul for Ricky Waltman for Purdue. And this was something Katie Gerald said, we need to keep her out of foul trouble so we can space the floor. But she picks one up just 15 seconds in. Yeah, and Ricky was in foul trouble in their uh, first round game. And, and coach said the key is we can't get her in foul trouble because then that allows Van Clunen and Carlin really to take ownership for Marquette down low. So Van Clunen gets the first. A 69% foul shooter. And Marquette has the first two points. There's Janae Terry handling the rock. Chloe Murata watching her. Dumbia attacks the baseline. Will back down from the block. She's... The closeout defense, and it's a travel and an early turnover for the Boilermakers. Yeah, Ricky Voltman should have taken that shot rather than try to uh, cut down the paint. She was inside of the free throw line. Marquette proved they can run against Ball State last time out. They'll expect Purdue to push a little bit as well with a quick athletic guard lineup. You see the defensive ability of Janae Terry there getting the arms out. And with active hands, Terry, a junior, started her college career at Illinois. She was a double-digit a game score for the Fighting Illini. And Clunan from the block, working on Waltman, tend to shoot, turns in the floater. Hard collision on the rebound. It's Carlin getting tangled up with Cassidy Harden underneath a great box out by Cassidy Harden she had sealed Carlin Carlin tried to go up and over and we'll take another look at it good shot there by LVK Carlin just reached over the top trying to use her length to tap that ball back out turnover on the opening possession for the Boilermakers Dumbia again off the bounce, rolls it in. She's had a couple of really good games for the Boilermakers coming into this second round game. And a quick step getting downhill for Dumbia. Has really dialed in into the right time. Kick out, Van Clunen loves that spot of the elbow. She can stretch the floor and has Marquette's first four points. A great choice by Chloe Murata not to go up and take that shot, but to give it to Van Clunen and trust her teammate that she would put that ball through the cylinder. Dumbia has the board off the Terry miss. Terry, a 42% field goal shooter. Abigail is also a newcomer to Purdue, puts her shoulder down into King and rolls it home. Ciel is not afraid to take some contact. Murata trapped. Terry around her, but finds Van Clunen at the baseline on the slip. Senior leadership, high basketball IQ, and strength out of Chloe Murata is what found her teammate Van Clunen open and made her get through that trap. Get an idea of how Purdue might double a big out near half court. Layden shot is off. The follow good uh, underneath from Okia Dumbia. Coach Gerald's talked about how her team needs to crash those boards and get those second chance opportunities. Dumbia is doing a great job down low for only being 5'9". She puts back the hard and miss. On the wing, King for three. Good ball movement there and spacing by Marquette, not allowing Purdue's defense to rattle them and keep that spacing so far out away from the glass. Marquette hit 7 of 14 from deep against Ball State. The team they would knew they would have to shoot the three against, they connected well. 
Purdue has used the paint early. Attempt to shoot for Ellis. She gets to the baseline, tries the no-look pass back up top for Terry. Great job by Marquette's defense to kind of push her towards that baseline, and Ellis stepped out of bounds. Ellis just running out of room. Transfer from Cal Poly now goes to work defending Jordan King. Eyes of Carlin. Very good in February, good into March as well. King on the line shoots. Morata in for a tough rebound. Spots McLaughlin on the rainbow three. Terry skies for the board. Excellent rebounding guard is Junaid Terry. Finds Ellis in stride. Would have moved to the basket but can't finish on the step through. Up and down game, Marquette and Purdue in the second round of the WNIT. The like winner will play the winner between Toledo and Kent State. I like Marquette's spacing here. Carlin got loose down low rather than putting it back up. She found a cutting LVK to the basket. She'll be on the line for two. Second trip to the foul line for Lauren Van Clunen. Good decision making from Liza Carlin. And Rokia Dumbia with the foul. That's her first in the second against Purdue. Lauren Van Clunen, a Marquette's career record 159 games. 14th all time in scoring. So One. Marquette has to win. They've got to come back here and play the third round just so she can get to 160. Make 159 it an even number, yep. doesn't sound good. I like 160 better. That might be a hard record to touch as well, of course. LBK, a six-year player for Marquette. Terry will work to her right. Walker defending her. Terry fouled, gets the bucket. She'll go to the line. Look at the strength there from Janae Terry. And that was great defense by Antoinette Walker. She had her stopped. But you're right, Patrick, the strength here by Terry just muscling the shot up and taking her body up strong into Walker. All about planting the feet, using her leverage there. Honorable mention, all Big Ten selection makes it a three-point play. And she's the first true guard to lead Purdue in program history and rebounding's in a season. Of all the great guards that they've had in Purdue history. Do it all players seize the floor so well. Included working on Woltman, who has a foul. Spots Walker at the elbow. Short J good for Antoinette Walker. Little inside out by Marquette. Antoinette Walker really has come on strong these last few months of the season, getting some well-earned playing time. She's been a leader down the stretch, guarding Terry again. Harden, the extra pass. Woltman in a tight space rolls it off. She's trying to get from left to right. Now she gets back on defense. Van Clunen showcase the jumper in this game. The rebound is tapped off of Walker. It'll be Purdue basketball. A good one brewing in Milwaukee. The first ever meeting up between Marquette and Purdue in the second round of the WNIT. Marquette 12, Purdue 9 early. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference.
12-9, Marquette, 438 to play in the opening quarter of this WNIT second round game. Well, Purdue 17 and 14 overall, 7 and 11 in the Big Ten Conference, doing it with six newcomers and a newcomer right here in Coach Katie Gerald's. Not a newcomer, of course, to Purdue, but a newcomer to being a head coach at the Division I level. Eight seasons, NAIA Marion of Indiana, where she was a three-time coach of the year, a couple of national titles, and really got thrown into this pretty late in the process. It was mid-September when she was elevated from the coach in waiting to the coaching position, and all she's done is orchestrate a 10-win improvement for the Boilermakers this season. Yeah, I think she's an outstanding fit as a head coach. I mean, her team has really bought into her coaching style. It's very different than Coach Sharon uh, Versips, and you'll see Marquette playing all man-to-man -man right now. They really haven't had a lot of time to adjust to getting into a zone defense, but the effort's always been there, Coach Gerald said from her team. The execution has not, but that'll come as they continue to work together as a coaching staff and athletes. First field goal attempt, first make for Brooke Moore. There she is off the bench. She's never in the starting lineup, only one start this season. That was on senior day. But she is going to be an impact player, number zero in black. See Moore right now guarding Jordan King as it comes to Walker on the baseline. Head fake, baseline drive, shot is long, gets her own miss, goes back up and rolls it in off the front iron. Uh, great will and effort there by number four. Antoinette Walker just ripping that board away and going up strong using the glass. Purdue five of its first nine shooting. Out to Moore, launches the long three and dials it in. Beautiful pass there by Marquette, or by uh, Purdue to Moore. Even with McLaughlin, McLaughlin coming at her, she was able to get that up and in. A 36% shooter from deep is Moore. Carlin gets the entry pass, going to work on Learn. Tough shot, touches all the rim, but doesn't fall. Ava Learn had Carlin pushed out away from the baskets. Good defense from 14, wearing the mask as Harden in a tough spot couldn't put it in, but the follow for Learn is good. Freshman Ava Learn, nine points in nine minutes. Against SIU, all of those in the third quarter. Whistle and a Purdue foul. Third against Purdue of the first quarter. And it's the second against Rokia Dumbia. So Dumbia will have a seat. And that's an important player that's going to have to take some time on the bench. She is four points early. And Clunin looking for space. Put the shoulder down and the arms out. Lauren Van Clunen, an L excellent start. LVK, nine points. She's got some great footwork down low and just makes chump change at Cassidy Harden. From 20 feet, yes. It's all working for LVK, who has 11 points. Well, they ended their shoot around early because LVK hit her half court shot and coaches yes, like, did. we're done. Yes, she did. You know that's a good sign in your shoot around today where you hit that half quarter. From just inside the arc, a miss for Jayla Smith. Good clear out by Van Clunen. Carlin calling for it, gets it on the block, stuffed, and then a foul. Now Liza Carlin keeping that ball high above her head. If she would have brought it down low, I really think that Janae Terry would have stripped that ball away from her. Terry got hands to the ball as we take a look at it here. See Carlin calling for it on the block. A little bit of space there from Harden. And it was a little bit of the arm there for Janae Terry. Yeah, Harden was on their, her top side and great seal by Liza Carlin. And Janae Terry just rotated over a little too slow. Don't sleep on Liza Carlin as we're talking about seniors. She did 10 and 10 against Ball State in the WNIT opener. Seven of those rebounds, offensive boards. 
Marquette attacking the glass in that game, plus 21. Morata defending Terry. Ellis looking for space around McLaughlin. Tend to shoot. Terry sees that. Calls for the screen of Learn. Morata continues to watch as Terry will launch. Smith trying to corral it. It'll stay with Purdue. And they get the reset on the shot clock to 20. A good defensive set there by Marquette. I mean, Purdue's very guard heavy, very quick. And Marquette's not as quick as they play with essentially two bigs in Chloe Murata. But they're doing a good job. Man, that jumper is beauty from Brooke Moore. As I say, they're doing a good job keeping those guards away from the basket. And Moore just drained that two-pointer. Two Three of four. And Clunan from inside 20 feet with an answer. And Coach Kitty Gerald just put her hands up and is like, seriously, is anybody going to guard her? Like, at what point does her team not realize that number 42 hits those all game long? Terry calls her own number. Hard collision as Ellis hits the deck. Yeah, Purdue's doing a great job crashing boards right now, trying to get second chance opportunities. That's one area that Coach Katie Gerald's talked about. We have to keep Marquette off the boards and not let them take over the game. I want to phrase it the way she did to us. Rebound, rebound, rebound for emphasis. With exclamation points at the yes. end of each of them. Yes. Spun inside for Van Clunen. Double comes, scores it anyway. She's just too good with that footwork. Great drop step. Terry shot at the horn, doesn't go. And Marquette's winning round one. 24 to 18 of the Golden Eagles with a lead at the end of the first quarter in the first all-time meeting between the Boilermakers and Marquette's. Off win there. And a lot of love here in Milwaukee this season for the work that she's done. And to get an impact transfer like that, Michelle, for Marquette, and one that can shoot it as well as anybody in women's college basketball has been a difference maker this season. It sure has, but look at what she's got. She's got an outstanding young coach in Megan Duffy, who was the Big East Coach of the Year last year. you got this outstanding facility of the Al McGuire Center, one of my favorite places for women's basketball in a great city of Milwaukee. Strong rebound there for Ricky Woltman, who puts back her first. You know, and the Al McGuire Center right on campus so students can walk here for practice. They can come and watch games. I mean, it's just, it's a great atmosphere here. King in trouble. More Terry on her, and King forced to make a mistake. A great defense by Moore and Terry. I mean, they've been really hounding the guards up top with that trap. March basketball has been a plenty here in Milwaukee, of course. WNIT action, as well as the NCAA first and second rounds down at Pfizer Forum Purdue moving on to the Sweet 16 where they'll take on St. Peter's on Friday. Oh, late foul called down there. Abby Ellis got knocked to the deck. I think that fall was called on Jordan King. We'll take another look. It King. is King that's her first. Yeah, King and McLaughlin switched on that baseline. McLaughlin had been on Ellis. Ellis very quick on her first step getting to the rim. Garnered a honorable mention all Big Ten selection this season. An accomplished player in her own right with nearly 1,200 points in her college career between here and Cal Poly. Murata stops. 13 to shoot as King handles. Loader pass. Terry picks it off. Terry pushes to the wing. And Moore slows it down. Waltman and Smith spun back in for Waltman, backed in. A chance.
jump ball, possession arrow will favor Marquette, so the Golden Eagles clap down defensively. A great help sight defense from Jordan King. As soon as Boltman turned, there was King, and she had nowhere to go, just to see a yellow. Boltman had back to baskets. Marquette had her defended well. Marquette looking for its first points here in quarter two. And King will size that up. Van Cluden the board, strong back up. Lauren Van Cluden at 17 points. Yeah. 17. 17. Yep. I'm speechless. No oh, look pass. Wow. Boltman the finish. Abby Ellis, a little razzle dazzle. Okay, she's got a lot of European style flair to her, like Coach Gerald says. That was outstanding. Ah, but the acceleration by McLaughlin to answer. And that's one thing that you don't see a lot out of Carissa. She doesn't like driving to the paint. She loves getting open and driving around that perimeter and shooting those outside shots. Floor was spaced for her. Boltman sets the screen for more. And Clunin guarding, bounce pass for Ellis on the finish. Beautiful basketball for Purdue. Yeah, great ball movement, great screens and backdoor cuts. Carlin in motion, left it short. Head up for Terry. Spots more, more. Baseline, King had her defended. Carissa wants to push for Marquette. Hits Murata in stride. And now Carlin from the free throw line is strong. Van Clunen up. Second chance doesn't go, just the third, yes! Well, it's kind of hard when you're five foot six, Abby Ellis, trying to box out a 6'2", Lauren Van Clunen. I'll give Ellis credit, but I think LBK is going to win every time. 19 of Marquette's 30 points from Lauren Van Clunen. It's unstoppable right now. Purdue looking for an answer on this possession. Eight to shoot. On the drive, it'll roll off for Smith. And Carlin was playing great defense there with her feet. She doesn't need to slap at that ball. Just keep pushing her towards that baseline. Don't slap. Just go straight up with that hand, and you're not going to get called for that foul. Well, we say to hello to uh, Indiana Miss Basketball from 2021 out of Lawrence North High School in Indianapolis. College game continues to come to her. She's been in double figures five times this season. Joins another Miss Basketball with this Purdue program. That is, of course, Katie Geralds. Yeah, Katie Geralds is one heck of a player at Purdue. And Purdue has recruited some nice pieces to continue to build uh, this program. You know, and Geralds took over for Sharon Versip, who was, ironically, her coach. You saw Cassidy Harden step back on. She is a three-point threat. Stepped into the shoes of Carissa McLaughlin. She wants some hard defense as well. McLaughlin here. Around the curl, finds Van Cluden from the block, and Lauren Van Cluden will go to the foul line to try to hit the 20-point total, and we're only in the second quarter. You know, Marquette is very strong with that basketball, and Purdue's really pushing Jordan King out to start that offense really high. But that flash from Van Clunen, the pass from McLaughlin, looks like Van Clunen's a little uh, shook up here. It was Janae Terry's second foul, so that is something to keep in mind. Looking to see if she got a bloody nose. Not much will stop Lauren Van Cluden at this point. Maybe that for a little bit. She has foul shots coming. Yeah, we don't want a Purdue towel. We want a towel from the Marquette bench, please. Thank you. Is. Yeah. Chloe Murata giving her the dap. So Van Clunen, 19 points, 8 of 11 from the floor. And 3 of 4 from the foul line. If 
She keeps this up. She might vault into 13th all-time in Marquette by the time tonight's over. Has to catch. Uh, she's pretty fun to watch. She needs to catch Erica Davenport, who's just below 1,500 career points. <laughs> Duffy's having a good time. I just love Coach Megan Duffy, her high energy, always coaching, always up and down that bench. Well, in spite of the monster performance, Purdue down six into Harden, fumbles out of bounds. King to push to the front courts, and Walker on the trigger off the front rim. Waltman had a hand on the board and a stay with Marquette with 20 to shoot. Marquette at 50% for the game, 12 of 24 from the field. They've attempted just two from three-point range. But Purdue on the other end, just one for five from three. I mean, look at the body from Cassidy Harden. Cassidy Harden, thank you. And they're hard really and pushing, first. really pushing yeah. those guards out, and, and even the crowd was yelling body. I mean, that was a little ridiculous, a little late by the officials, too. Yeah, an aggressive defense from the Purdue guards pressing Marquette out high. But they'll go inside to Van Cluden again. Walker across, just over Murata's hands. Cycles back McLaughlin's way for three! Timeouts, Katie Geralds. Excellent ball movement there by Marquette. And McLaughlin is always in that space, ready to catch and shoot on a lickety split notice. Marquette's extending the lead to nine on Purdue in the second quarter here in Milwaukee. different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. Marquette has started to push the pace against Purdue here in the second quarter. And Michelle, if there's anything we've learned about Marquette this season, not just in the Big East regular season or the tournament or here in the WIT, is they can match the style that a team is going to play. They can change the way they play. Everybody talks about the physicality, getting it into the post to Lauren Van Cluden or Liza Carlin when you talk to other coaches. But Marquette and Megan Duffy have the ability to kind of change and morph the way they play to match what an opponent's going to do to them. Absolutely. You know, when we were focused on the last game against Ball State, the Ball State coach said, you know, we're going to run against Marquette, and Marquette wants to work half-court offense. I'm like, no, that's not Marquette basketball. Marquette basketball is getting into the flow, whatever feels comfortable for them at the time. 
and the spacing has been great, the passing has been great, execution so far has been really solid on offense for Marquette. And defense, they've done a nice job of holding Purdue. Brooke Moore, seven, Abby Ellis, five points. Suban Kluder didn't like that. As she picks up the personal foul to go along with, oh, by the way, 21 points. That's her first third against Marquette here in the quarter. Along with our fine Big East crew in Milwaukee and Michelle Griffin Wenzel, I'm Patrick Reed. Second round WNIT action in Milwaukee. The winner will face the winner between Toledo and Kent State in some action in the second round. Yes, I said action. Waltman has the ball off the pass from the Golden Eagles. And into Dumbia back of the game, who spots Moore. Rolls off of Walker and back the other way. Moore can't score it. Wolfman had the hands up and puts it back on the second chance. And that's what Ricky Wolfman can do. Rose Nakumu with her first action here for Marquette. Jordan King is on the bench. And Clunin in for Walker. Swiped away by Dumbia. And Dubia plays a lot bigger than they list her at five foot nine. She's got a couple of personal fouls. Let's fly from three. Now the rebound for Nakumu. Marquette plus five on the boards. Golden Eagles, of course, one of the best rebounding teams in the country. 11th in rebound margin at just under 10 per game. Plus 10 per game. Walker to the wing, McLaughlin in stride. Off Boltman's hands comes to Ellis. It will spin away from Walker. Ellis tried to make an extra pass and there's a foul to bail her out. Yeah, Ellis has no problems getting into that paint. She is really quick. And I think it was Walker that got from the backside reached in from behind, and that's her second foul. That's her second foul. King will come back into the game. Marquette with four fouls in the quarter. Dumbia backing down McLaughlin. Three-pointer on the way is long from hard bin and falls through. Friendly bounce on the road rim for Cassidy Harden. Yeah, Cassidy Harden, this team leads Purdue and made threes. Coach said she uh, bleeds black and gold and has really bought into Coach Gerald's philosophy and wants to come back next year to play. Hard defender as well, Nakumu somehow gets it around her. Entry pass for Van Cluden, spots Nakumu. Nine to shoot for King and Marquette. Now five, sees that clock. Nakumu, entry pass for Van Clunen, turns on the block, gets the second chance, maybe she gets a hand out, swipes it to King, who rolls over with the basketball. It'll be a jump ball and a possession arrow favoring Purdue. Yeah, that defense on the top of the key from Purdue has really given Nakumu and King some fits. They're trying to advance that ball. Marquette needs to bring their players up just a little bit higher, create some angles to get those passes to continue with the offensive flow. Offensively, things have been there for Purdue despite missing Madison Layden for a second straight game. Leads Purdue at 11.6 points per game. Terry. Instructions to her squad. Sees Ellis. Back in on McLaughlin. Puts the elbow in. And the ball spins out. Dumbia on the board. Nokia Dumbia looking for an option. Spotted Terry. Sent her the wrong way. And it'll roll to the opposite baseline where Marquette will have the basketball. The unfortunate turnover there for Purdue. Great post move by Abby Ellis. I mean, standing five foot six, she's going in there, attacking rim, getting up a post move. That bucket just didn't go for her. The Australian has shown no fear, and you see that from a lot of Katie Gerald's players and their efforts. 
to King. Uh, the open three is in and out. Terry the rebound. Entry pass. Waltman in stride. Uh, rolls off. Yeah, Ricky Waltman's got to put that ball in the cylinder. LVK has 21. Backs in on Waltman. Help comes defensively from Moore. Talk about no fear more at 5-7 getting dirty along the baseline. Yeah, and triple, triple guarded down there. Janae Terry come, came from one side, Voltman on the other, and then Brick Moore came on the ball side. 15 to shoot. McLaughlin to Nakumu. Looking for that option. She'll spot Van Clunen, gets it on the pass back, and rolls it home. Excellent set play there by Marquette. Rose Nakumu on the receive again from Van Cluden. 90 seconds to go in the quarter. Taps off of Van Cluden's hands. It'll stay Purdue basketball. Yeah, Ricky Boltman's going to have a tough time posting up against LVK. LVK is a really solid defender in the post. That time she was on the strong side or top side of Voltman. And Jordan Kin came up to cover up that backside. Ball was tipped, Moore saves it. Ten to shoot. To Moore, Nakumu meets her. Moore, shoulder down, gets by Nakumu, left it short. Ellis is fouled. Abby Ellis is a lot like Chloe Murata in that she's just hanging around the basket, picking up whatever loose change she can get. And Abby is such high energy. This is a team with really good rebounding guards. We've talked about Terry. An excellent rebounding guard. Tenth in the Big Ten in rebounding, which is hard to do in that league for a guard. Ellis right there as well in terms of being near the basket speak on the carom six points for Ellis I mean and she's on the small size for guards in the Big Ten by far five six maybe a buck fifty she's just long and quick long arms super quick on that first step Purdue has held Marquette to one of their last five as we hit the final minute of the first half. So Van Clunen, quick catch and shoot goes long. A rebound by Moore. Purdue has done a better job defensively on Van Clunen, getting her out of rhythm a little bit here in the second quarter. And now looking to cash in on offense down four. Five of 13 shooting in the period. Entry pass for Smith fading toward the baseline. Jayla Smith. Getting some good minutes off the bench for number three. It's a big bucket. You're down two now with 20 to go until halftime. Half seconds different shot clock to game clock. Nakumu spying it. Motion starts. It's Murata fouled by Harden. That'll be the second against Cassidy Harden. 14 fouls against Purdue here in the second quarter, so Marquette will inbound with the shot clock dark. Arata working left. Learn guarding her. McLaughlin left alone for three first seconds. That's all she needs. Carissa McLaughlin makes it a 40-point first half for Marquette. Uh, you cannot leave the hottest shooter on the Marquette squad alone on an inbounds play with five seconds to go. And it wasn't long, and she buried the three-pointer. Her second made three of the game. McLaughlin has eight, but Lauren Van Clunen. Second half underway in Milwaukee. With a 
our fine Big East crew, Michelle Griffin Wenzel, I'm Patrick Reed. Marquette with a five-point lead to start the second half and a miss for Carissa McLaughlin on the opening shot of period three. Great offensive set there by Marquette. McLaughlin just has to finish that. And Woltman off the roll scores the opening bucket for Purdue in the second half. Ricky Woltman now with eight points to lead the Boilermakers. They've been able to keep her on the floor. She's four of six shooting. And only one foul. She's played really well down low against Van Clunen. King from just inside the three-point arc. Rebound for Ellis. You know, Marquette closing out that second quarter was pretty cold until... And the lane parted just enough there for Abby Ellis. Until Van Clunen popped that three, and Abby Ellis has had no problems getting to the rack. And Megan Duffy does not like what she sees in these opening 62 seconds of the third quarter. Step aside, Purdue has closed the gap to one on Marquette's. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. Abby Ellis has helped close Purdue's gap to one. Early in the third quarter, she has nine points to lead the Boilermakers. All about energy, Katie Gerald's told us, and she has delivered that energy, and Lauren Van Clunen with an answer for Marquette out of the timeout. Yeah, they need to get LVK going again, as well as McLaughlin. She's been kind of quiet until that last three-pointer right before half. Into Carlin. Uh, Ellis there to get hands in front of the pass coming in to Carlin for Marquette. Swings it over to the corner. Harden driving it on Van Clunen. Tough shot, rolls it home to make it a one-point game again. You know, it's the guards for Purdue who have really stepped it up and played tough against the bigs from Marquette. Purdue taking what Marquette will give them defensively in Purdue, putting heads down, shoulders down. Getting into the paint. Murata looking for an opening around Terry, and Terry commits the foul. That will be her third personal. A great job by Chloe Murata to find an opening, to not give up on this. Nobody really spacing out for Chloe to pass to. So she's like, all right, I'm just going to take this up, draw the foul wisely, as that's number three against number 10, there Janine not, Terry. Well, there have not been many misses at the foul line this season for Chloe Murata, who shoots at 87%. She gets one of two for her first point of the game. She has one point, four rebounds, three assists. And now her team getting back to defend the half court. Ellis with nine points, walks it across midcourt. Nokia Dumbia 
Swings it to the edge for the Harden three. She has one in this game, couldn't make one there to add to her total. And now King will push. Gets it back, leaves it for Van Cloonen. Has 23 points for Marquette. And Laughlin rolls the screen as King will drive baseline. Off balance shot, second chance, she'll pull out. Ten to shoot, King, uh, open three right side. Much better catch and shoot there from King. Nice ball rotation. That'll help her as that's her uh, sixth point. Marquette spacing the lead back to five. Harden looking for an answer here. That's long. Uh, the long board to Van Cloonan. The pass over Carlin's fingertips. It'll be Purdue basketball. Right idea, wrong outcome there. King just too much mustard on the rack. Six turnovers for Marquette, which has made a habit in this second half of the season of taking better care of the basketball. Purdue with just five. Brookmore on the wing, driving it on King, baseline through a crowd. Carlin head hands up. Head up from McLaughlin. The lead back for King uh, steps inside the 18-footer short. And grabs her own miss. Another rebound for Jordan King. And Cluden to back down Waltman, spots Murata. First field goal make for Chloe Murata. Murata money, I love it. I love the passing and the spacing between LBK and Murata on that. Brooke Moore, impact player off the bench, has seven points. Harden, pass off the fingertips of Waltman. It'll be an off, it'll be a foul against Marquette. Yeah, we'll have to take another look at that. I thought Chloe was in position as Voltman just kind of went up and pummeled Murata to the ground. Nice pass there from Harden. I think Chloe was set. I really do. It's interesting is Waltman wasn't trying to score there. She was just trying to bring in that pass. Dumbia leaves it behind, picked off by Walker. And she was trying to feed Voltman underneath, and Walker, great spacing on defense. King, there's the opening, there's the score off the left for Jordan King. Yeah, if Abby Ellis can do it, why can't Jordan King? And that electrifies this crowd and causes Coach Katie Gerald to call her timeout. Marquette, an excellent response here with the third quarter. An 8-0 run for the Golden Eagles to extend the lead uh, to nine on Purdue. Kelly Kamara, a Purdue great. We'll talk about her when we come back to Milwaukee. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work, we endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope, we believe, and we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference.
Kelly Camara, part of the Marquette coaching staff in her first season with the Golden Eagles. And wow, what a career she had at Purdue. Led the Boilermakers to a national championship in 1999. Get a look at her and her outstanding career. Talk about players who bleed black and gold. Katie Gerald's one of those. I said, do you bleed black and gold more than Kelly Camara does? Come on. Not at all. And I remember watching that national championship game against Duke in my apartment with my players on 92nd and Morgan. It, Camille Cooper, Katie Douglas, Yukari Figg, Stephanie White, the national runner-up player of the year, Kelly and Tiffany Young, all coached by Carolyn Peck, who was just there two seasons. Kelly was a freshman on that team, and then her junior year, they ended up winning uh, runner-up. But um, Tiffany Young, one of the uh, players from that 99 team, ended up passing away four months later in a car accident uh, outside of Gary, Indiana. Ended up getting uh, killed by a drunk driver, and, th and that was one of those memories that Carolyn Peck talked about, how she just, she will never forget Tiffany Young and, and uh, that team from 99. Carolyn Peck, you can now hear calling NCAA tournament games for ESPN. Of course, we're into the second round of the NCAA women's tournaments on this Monday night. I mean, that team was just loaded, and, and Coach Kelly ended up being the uh, Big Ten freshman of the year that year. Second from Wolfman Good. So a couple of foul shots knocked down by Ricky Wolfman. Big collision and a foul against Cassidy Harden. And that'll be your third. That's a big foul right there. Harden, one of the top three-point shooters on this Purdue squad. Maybe a little bit of a makeup call there as Chloe was called for the blocking foul down below a couple possessions ago, and as you saw it there. Pretty similar look. Yeah, Cassidy Harden knew she probably was in position. So that's the third for Harden. Janae Terry also has three fouls. She's on the floor now as Harden is on the bench. Marquette looking to extend their lead to nine, possibly ten here on this possession. Katie Geralds is worried about Ricky Waltman getting into foul trouble, but now her talented guards are facing that issue. McLaughlin steps inside the free throw line and misses. Outlet comes to Terry. Accelerating free throw line, now baseline. Terry running into trouble there. Antoine Ed Walker back the other way, finds King in motion. And Jordan King was caught under the basket. King yeah. grabs the rebound. Sigh there, big sigh because nobody from Marquette rotated over to take that shooter. Rotating is Van Cluden toward the basket. She's been getting hers at the line tonight. This will be her fourth trip. You see what Jordan King sees here. Yeah, really great shake and bake move there. Took her to the left, brought her back to the right, drew the foul. And that follows the third on Dumbia. So Rokia Dumbia has three now. That's another guard with three fouls for Katie Geralds. And Brooke Moore looking at Dumbia and just pointing to her head like, hey, think, be smart here. We can't afford to get all the guards falling out of this game. Holtman steps out, screen for Moore. Moore calls her own number. Rebound inside for Dumbia. Smith on the runner. Rebound McLaughlin. Trying to escape half court. Black shirt's coming to her. Safely to the hands of King. For Antoine Ed Walker, outstanding in the first round against Ball State. Marquette running a four-out, one-in offense. Shot misses from Murata. And it's last touched by Jayla Smith. Yeah, Antoinette Walker. Check out Antoinette Walker. Yeah, Antoinette Walker is one of those guards, too, that likes to get down low and, and strip rebounds away from the bigs. Make some disruption on defense as well. Hasn't been an easy shooting quarter for either team. 
Purdue, 3 of 11. Marquette, 4 of 11. Here's Moore. Moore just kind of egged Jordan King on. She's like, I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. And then finally, she just got her space in and popped it. And you see her range. We've seen the jumper. All of that off the bench for Brooke Moore. And driving on Terry. And Van Clunen from just inside the arc rattles another one down. At 25 points for Lauren Van Clunen. Can we say she's had a quiet third quarter so far? You know, 21 points and a half is unbelievable. And there's Walker again with another big steal. King ahead. Defense to offense for Marquette. And Jordan King was not going to allow herself to get under the basket any further like she did last time. Great transition basketball for the Golden Eagles. Moore is able to draw the foul. Uh, Jordan King trying to get through that screen set by Ricky Voltman. Speaking of guards with three fouls, Jordan King joins the club. There's Antoine Ed Walker, who has come to play near the end of her career. And Jordan King just running right next to her, getting that space. And Walker with a great pass to King to finish. Both teams with three fouls in the third quarter. Ava Learn will check into the game for Ricky Woltman. The only Purdue player in double figures is Woltman. And with Woltman on the bench, Purdue goes with a much smaller, more guard-heavy lineup. Opens up a lot more spacing in their offense as well. Second good for Moore, so now she joins Woltman in double figures. Now the pressure comes. Carlin across. Walker attacks. Walker short jumper. <laughs> Friendly roll at home for Antoine Ed Walker. I love the confidence that number four is playing with right now on both ends of the floor. Moore had the space for a moment. Shot is short. Terry can't save it, Marquette basketball. And Coach Gerald wants that play to look at again. They thought maybe it was tipped, because usually Moore doesn't miss a three-pointer that short. Pressure again from Purdue. Marquette knew to expect this. Five to get it across from Murata. Gets it right. Glopple it around the pressure. It is relentless right now. Yeah, Jordan King not on the floor. Ten to shoot. Laughlin around Terry. Opening for a moment. Line drive short. Murata clears it to the left. Five to shoot. Defense again, Purdue all over it, and then a foul. Moore can't believe it. And Coach Gerald is just looking at that shot clock saying, we had them to three seconds, three seconds. Just don't foul because McLaughlin was nowhere near the basket, nowhere near putting that ball up because she had two Boilermakers hounding her right in front of the Marquette bench. That is so frustrating as a coach. I've seen it so many times watching both NCAA tournaments this past weekend. A team defends enough to run that shot clock down and then a late foul and a bailout. And the clock will reset to 20 seconds with 109 to go on the game clock in the third quarter. McLaughlin, the turn and shoots in and out. Walker hands on the basketball. And it will be Purdue ball. A great curl from that weak side. McLaughlin got a great look. Purdue trying to trim a 10-point deficit. Ellis back on the floor. See her toughness on display offensively tonight. 
Harden uh, travels with the basketball, trying to get space to her left. That big disruption there by Liza Carlin. Marquette has done a really good job disrupting Harden tonight. A known commodity as a three-point shooter, a 34% shooter. And Marquette, or uh, excuse me, Purdue shooting two for 11 in three-point land. Hasn't been a factor. Carlin uh, in and out. Van Clunen, uh, it's a foul on the rebound. A great box out by Cassidy Harden. LVK just reached up and over and kind of hip checked. It's her second. You know, and Purdue is really known for their three point defense. I mean, they were the, the leaders in the Big Ten this season, keeping the opponents shooting about 22% from three point land. There you go, LVK. Just reaching up and over and pretty much squashing Harden. Marquette has also been a great three point defending team. They leave the Big East in that category. And Marquette shooting 50% right now, four for eight. Janae Terry has the basketball. Antoinette Walker defends. Screen is set. Terry back over to Moore. Moore driving in on Nakumu. Uses the fingertips. Nakumu sees the clock. She'll watch. Just shorts. The second round of the WNIT has been action-packed here in Milwaukee. It's the Golden Eagles with an eight-point lead on Purdue. Fourth quarter coming next. And now Chloe honoring her father's memory by picking up that rebounding total. Yeah, I've been watching Chloe since she was a freshman at Homestead High School. I had the privilege of being the PA announcer at Germantown High School. They were part of the conference with Homestead. So I got Chloe and her sister Carly, both tremendous athletes at Homestead, about half hour north of here. Pressure comes again on Marquette at the start of the quarter. Learn, trying to pry the basketball away. It's Learn, Ellis, and Moore. We know how tenacious Moore and Ellis can be with the basketball in their hands. Let's see what they do here on the pressure. Learn making it really difficult. Ellis had hands in. It'll be and that's not a smart place to get trapped for Nkumu. They got to get Jordan King back in there. You know, you got the trap, you've got the baseline, you got the sideline, and right there, a turnover off of Nkumu's head, out of bounds. Chance for Purdue to make it a two possession game. Ellis helped take it away. And she can help make it a two possession game here. She'll shoot a pair of free throws. I mean, Purdue just opens up that paint and they just let number 23 drive. And Antoinette Walker reached in rather than stepping in. I believe that's her third foul. So make that her third personal. Jordan King has three as well. We've talked about Purdue and its foul trouble. Ellis misses the first. Junae Terry, Rokia Dumbia and Cassidy Harden all with three fouls, three guards for Purdue. Second one good. Pressure again. King spots Carlin. McLaughlin across. To the wing for Murata. Pressure comes again. Purdue jumping around the basketball now as McLaughlin lets it fly. A great ball rotation from Marquette passing through that press. That was to her right. Pulls up. Rebound for Learn. Back up on Carlin. Learn can't score it. Smart defense by Liza. Keeping things nice and vertical there, not leaning into that space. Marquette trying to slow it down by the pressure again. Swing pass for King inside the arc. Marquette needed that. Great spacing and ball movement. LBK putting it right in the shooter's packet.
Moore for three. Yes. That crossover dribble just shook King right off. Gave her the spacing. She needed to drain that three. 15 points for Brooke Moore. Foul for Ava Learn at midcourt. You see Learn wearing the face mask. And we see Brooke Moore with the three-pointer here. That is a little cross on that dribble, giving that spacing. I mean, she's so good off the bench. And right now, 20 points from the bench players for Purdue. 20 out of their 52. Of course, that is keyed by Moore, who averages 10 a game at 27 in the WNIT opener. Screen set for King. Luden backing in on Learn. Quick move, foul from Learn. Or maybe Terry, it's going to be Learn. Yeah, Learn came over on the back side. LBK does an excellent job of keeping that ball above her head. Nice drop step here. Again, weak side, a little late, swinging over, and Learn to pick up that foul. But you see, it's that quick, decisive move for LBK when she has the basketball in her hands. She likes to start out going left, her left, and then she'll drop that right foot. And it's so difficult to stop her. 27 points for Lauren Van Clunen. 15 of those in the first quarter. Terry to the corner. Moore for three. Three ball corner pockets, Brooke Moore. Yeah, LVK came out to stretch the offense for Purdue. And that left more open in the corner. Nobody rotated over. Probably nobody knew she was over there. That's going to be the third team foul against Purdue in the quarter. The first against Ellis Michelle. As we take a look at this three here, after the made basket, Purdue's right into pressure mode again. I think they're going to have to be careful now to avoid racking up those fouls. Now they may have to go back into that half-court defense. Harden's got three. The game is manageable as McLaughlin will miss. It's a five-point Marquette lead. Uh, Terry, Dumbia, and Harden all with three fouls each. Moore missed. Ellis spilled to the deck. Terry with hands up. Moore sees the baskets. Can't score the basketball. She hesitated, waited at the three-point line before Ellis said, just go to the hoop. Yeah. So Moore will shake that off. Unfortunate mistake there, for sure. You or, see pass, was... or pass it yeah. to Ellis. Let Ellis take it in. Or why not shoot the three? Because Ellis was there for the rebound. That's Lies... a tough pass from LVK to Carlin. Carlin gets a touch and is fouled underneath. Liza Carlin has... A couple of points, both coming at the foul line. She's 0 for 4 shooting in 22 minutes. Gets it here. Trouble comes again with the double. Now McLaughlin for three. Terry the rebound. To the wing, Brooke Moore for three. King clears. Now somebody's going to want to find number zero. She's been pretty hot as of late on those threes. When Marquette's coming back on defense, somebody's got to pick up zero. Marquette has hit just one of its last seven from the... Hey, King. LBK with a huge block. The crowd here, Marquette, goes crazy. And Moore will foul King there. That will be Moore's second foul. Fifth foul there on Purdue. That'll send King to the line. She should be shooting two. Unless the scorer got the uh, fourth foul up there. All right, so that's four on Purdue. We good? We are good. All right. To King. 
And Marquette's just been a little bit flat here. And that's number Ooh. three on Moore. And that'll send McLaughlin to the line. McLaughlin came charging hard in this direction. And if Moore got her, it wasn't by much. And that now is the fifth team foul against Purdue in the fourth. Ellis will go to the bench. Moore will stay out with her third. So McLaughlin will be at the foul line. Where Marquette tonight is 11 of 15. And Marquette will be in the bonus situation for the remainder of the game. And that's key as Marquette has been shooting their free throws very well, Patrick, like you just mentioned. Terry working in the half courts to Cassidy Harden on the handback. Marquette's leads at 10. Harden looking for some space. Moore, Dumbia calls for the ball. Screen comes from Wolfman. Terry's going to step up here. Foul line jumper, good for Janae Terry. Great decision by the junior to get that space and take that shot. Purdue continuing to try to close that gap on Marquette. Wing jumper. McLaughlin was fouled. Yeah, McLaughlin setting that screen on Van Clunen coming out to the wing. And Voltman just kind of pushed right through McLaughlin, center to the floor. The moments will get a little tighter for Megan Duffy's team here in the fourth quarter, trying to stave off Purdue in advance to the third round of the WNIT. We're different here. We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. Marquette trying to hold on on its home floor for its 15th win here of this season. Sound up, now sound down for the Marquette fans. The winner of this game will move on to face the Toledo Rockets, who in a matchup of MAC teams in the second round of the WIT best, the Golden Flashes of Kent State by a 79 to 59 score. As Toledo piled up 42 first half points. Mac, of course, an outstanding mid-major women's basketball conference. Marquette saw Ball State in the opening round, and you know, Ball State was a team with NCAA aspirations. They have not been able to get to the dance yet under Brady Sally. Marissa McLaughlin will be at the foul line for Marquette. 
Golden Eagles 75% for the game. McLaughlin, one of three in double figures for Marquette, led by Lauren Van Clunen's 27, which included 15 first half points. Will at home the second. So the lead is on nine. But Purdue can change that in a flash. Dumbia driving in on McLaughlin, high off the window. King of the rebound to take it away from Moore. The effort ratcheting up now for the Purdue Boilermakers who have well exceeded expectations this season. And it's King underneath, short miss. This is a team with a 10-win improvement and a takeaway by Walker. King accelerates in, scores with the left. I think that's third steal by Antoinette Walker. She comes off that bench and she just brings a little bit more energy. She loves to disrupt those passing lanes, and I really like seeing her on the floor down these last four minutes. And Moore sinks a jumper at the other end. And there's her 20th point off the bench. She has 47 points in the WNIT. McLaughlin spots the opening and connects. She is so good at turning, squaring, and popping. From three or inside the arc, Carissa McLaughlin has 13. It's an 11-point lead. Terry's shoulder down, misses short, tipped it. Murata saves it. Coach Gerald's talked about how Marquette's one of the teams in the country that makes a lot of long two-pointers. Lauren Van Clunen, a big reason why. Into Walker, tapped by Terry. That will be the fourth foul. Yeah, Walker, very smart posting up. She just kind of gave Van Clunen a little whoop just to draw the attention. And as soon as she did that, Terry just reached right over and occupied Antoinette's space. Can't do that. Seven points for Antoinette Walker. Has saved her best basketball for last in her Marquette career. Or started her college career at Arkansas Little Rock. Can't will in the second. Gets the rebound. Walker makes it a three-point possession. She's always hanging around that basket. Give credit to LVK, though. She was able to get that rebound initially, and, and Walker cleaned up the loose change on the mishandle. Block. Lauren Van Clunen have the arms out. Harden on the floor. Marquette ahead. King leaves it for Walker. And a foul. You know, you wouldn't think that Marquette loves to run all the time, but man, when they get that oh, ball yeah. in transition, they are tough to stop. And again, they knew they were going to have to run with Purdue. Look at that block. And Harden saves it to LBK, and LBK's like, oh, I got it back. And look at this pass from McLaughlin to King and Walker finishing it up into the free throw line. Third foul on Ava Learn. Purdue is over the limit in the quarter. And it was a timeout for Katie Geralds in Purdue. You know, Coach Duffy told us today that you know we need to be ready for their small lineups their speed and athleticism and I think Marquette has matched them the speed and athleticism and, and they have handled the pressure well in the backcourt they've needed to rebound and they've done that very well and they've done a great job on half court defense really closing down those passing lanes, especially Antoinette Walker. You know, give her team a lot of credit. They have been all over the scouting report this week. Coaches have laid out the plan. The players have been locked in. And of course, the WNIT is not the standard for Marquette. NCAA appearances are, NCAA wins are. This year, it didn't come to pass, as the Big East did get four teams into the dance, including Creighton, which of course, Made headlines yesterday. Yeah, we won't talk about Sorry, that. Sorry, Michelle. <laughs> oh, boy. That was a heartbreak. Moore at the foul line. Learn with the rebound. Kicks it out to Harden for three. In and out. 
And Murata trying to pry it away. And Marquette with the possession. And here comes that Purdue pressure. Marquette has scored nine of the last 11 points to grow this lead to 16. A great job by McLaughlin. And it is but she a backcourt violation. She reversed the ball, which was a good idea. They just didn't know it, how much time they had left. Purdue needs points in a hurry. Terry with no time to waste. It's the hand back from Learn. Rebound Murata. Away from the pressure into the hands of King. And I think time is going to tick down on this Purdue season. Marquette just needs to be smart here. Run this shot clock down. Bounce pass inside for Walker. It'll be Purdue ball. And not turn the ball over. I paused to watch the action of LVK passing to Walker and great backdoor cut there. Just couldn't get a handle on it. Well, 145 to go. Marquette up 15. Walker the foul. He just got to play smart right now and not stop the clock. That's only the second foul of the quarter for Marquette. They've done a really good job on defense. Playing aggressive defense, but not overly aggressive. As King is the only one and uh, Walker. Walker's with four fouls, King with three. Body language from Katie Gerald. She senses that her team has done all it can do this season. King taking more clock off. McLaughlin didn't need a star performance against her former team. 13 points all over the floor tonight as King's hook shot misses. She grabs the rebound, and Marquette will have the reset. And now the fans here inside the Al McGuire Center can sense that Marquette's can do big things in this tournament as McLaughlin puts an exclamation point on it for Marquette. Icing, icing on the cake. Yes, sir. You said she hasn't had a huge performance. That was big right there to finish off Purdue. The leading three-point shooter in Purdue history comes off the floor. And she'll lead Marquette to the third round of the WNIT. I think she heard you, Patrick, and she's just like, watch Let's this. Go. Watch this. I'm going to bank. Let's go. I'm going to put this one in the bank. There is no doubt with the number Purdue. 12 in gold. The Boilermakers on the bench, Coach Kelly. Count it plus one for Ellis. And again, you know, all the credit in the world goes to Purdue for pushing way past the possibilities that they had coming into this season. Katie Gerald's told us that yesterday. If, if you said to her that they would be in this position in the second round of the postseason still playing, she wouldn't have believed it back in September. There was a lot of turnover on this roster. I believe four of their top players ended up going into that transfer portal. Including McLaughlin. Meanwhile, Marquette able to match its opponent tonight. We continue to adjust to the scouting report and style of play. They will find themselves in a date with the Toledo Rockets in the third round of the WNIT. Moore leading Smith. Smith couldn't save it. And Rose Nakumu can dribble out the final seconds of Marquette's 23rd win of the season. To the delight of the fans in Milwaukee, Marquette will move on to the WNIT. The Golden Eagles will match up with the Toledo Rockets. So 
Megan Duffy's group does it once again on its home floor. Stay with us.